Well, praise the Lord. They tell us it's the first day of the week, a day to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, or to put it another way, it is Sunday. God bless you and thank you for joining us today on this day of worship that we can glorify the Lord and be able to look a little bit more into his word. Amen. We've been traveling through the book of Ephesians, looking at the word holy, Holy Spirit and Spirit. Plus, we've been picking up a few other words that kind of connect to what we've been talking about. And so we're glad that you've joined us today. Pray that today will be a day of rejoicing in the Lord in some form or fashion that you may be with your either gather together or not gather together or Zoom together, whatever it may be, but that you would be able to just enjoy the presence of God today, amen, in your life. And so as we've been going through the book of Ephesians, looking at some of these other words, I wanted to just highlight something because we're coming to the end of chapter six. And of course, we're going to talk about the full armor of God in the light of the breath of God or the spirit of God or the Holy Spirit speaking to us how to do spiritual warfare in our day and age. And it's interesting. I think Ephesians, of course, is such an appropriate book for our time, the way we are finding ourselves in the things that we are facing, things that we're going through. Uh, I think it's such an appropriate book to go back and study because it gives us the proper attitude and the character that we should have as we live here on earth as disciples. And that's why he will go and talk about the marriage relationship. He will talk about how we should be as a parent to our children, how we, if we were to have, uh, well, back then they had bound servants and even slaves, which doesn't make it right. But then Paul was trying to encourage them how to work one with another as believers. See, being a believer in Jesus Christ supersedes everything else. When you were a follower of Christ, that becomes the new standard, the new way of living. And so I'm when I was thinking about this, I thought, you know, the book of Ephesians, you know, everybody's talking about reset, reset, reset. Well, I think the book of Ephesians gives us great material that we need to reset the church on and reset us as disciples in amen and that's why we should get into a matter of fact all the bible is so important but here ephesians is trying to get us to understand something i don't know if you've ever read a book by watchman knee uh, watchman knee was a pastor evangelist missionary over in china and uh you know went through very difficult times there and uh, the revolution and everything else that took place in that country but it was difficult difficult for missionaries difficult for the, the proclaiming of the word of god and he was really a kind of an unknown person until a number of years ago i don't know maybe back in the 50s 60s i would have to go check my books that people started to translate his books and uh they've been such a blessing to those who take time to read them in North America or in English. Up until that time, it was kind of a, a very little known person on the other side of the world in a closed country, but proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the reason why I, I bring up his name today, I mean, he's been passed away for many years now, but he wrote a little commentary on Ephesians, and he titled it, um, Sit, Walk, and Stand. And the main goal of his book in, in writing about Ephesians is that he tries to tell us that we need to sit before the Lord first, then walk with the Lord. And when we, we do those two, two things, we'll be able to stand for the Lord. And it's interesting that today um, we're going to talk about how we take our stand but in the last number of days, we've gone through the whole idea how we should sit before the Lord, how we should learn before the Lord, how we should hear the voice of God. Amen. And then how we should walk it out, where he talked about walking in love, walking in the light, walking in the wisdom of God, walking out our faith, even in our marriage. But then as we 
move along, we're going to see that starting at verse 10 of chapter 6, he's now going to bring us into what he's been alluding to all the way along, is how we need to take a stand for Jesus Christ. There's lots of people taking stands for all kinds of things today. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, you can get herbal medicines, then people are taking a stand for that. You can get certain kinds of food, people are taking stands for that. People are taking stands for certain types of people in government or not in government. You can take a stand for the what you, you believe or not believe. I mean, somewhere along the line, you, you take a stand. But what Paul was trying to tell the church, church, can we take a stand for Jesus Christ and him only? Leave all the other stuff behind, set it aside, cut it away, or as Paul used it, take it off and do what? Put on the full armor of God. See, Paul wanted the church to take to be, get to the place that it could sit with the Lord and 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 get to the place of getting into the word and letting the word get into them. That's what Paul was hoping for. That's what Paul saw. That's what could change everyone's life if we could just get into the word and let the word get into us. Then as you do that, as you take that that, that position of sitting before the Lord, that you will be able to then rise up and be able to walk out what the Lord wants you to walk out. And we can see that as it lists all these things that we are to walk in, to the very place that it takes us not only to walk in love and walk in light and walk in wisdom, but how to walk as husband and wife, how to walk when it comes to our fellow workers. Paul lays it all out. Because the Ephesian uh, city was a very wealthy city. And he was trying to tell them that there's a new journey. There's a new way of doing things. It's interesting that over in the Asian rim where we have spent a lot of our time, Colwyn and I, that, it, that one thing you'll see as they worship their gods, a variety of gods, one of the things that I've noticed is that they go to their temples and they spend a lot of time sitting there and looking at either pictures of gods or uh you know, some type of created image of God, hoping to get some type of insight. Lord, and sit in his presence and hear by his breath, his spirit, to let his spirit speak into. See, that's why the, the, I think the devil just wants to keep us busy, busy being busy, because he doesn't want us to sit and hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Wouldn't it be interesting that if we could find somewhere like 10, 15, half an hour, an hour of time every day where we could just sit before the Lord, look into his word, read a little bit, pray a little bit, get built up and encouraged, strengthened. And I know as you do, then you will be an overcomer. There is no other way to be an overcomer than by sitting with the Lord. And then you're able, as you sit with the Lord, as Paul says to the Ephesians, you will also be able to walk in the Lord. They were able to walk in love and in the light of Jesus Christ and in his wisdom because they first sat with him. See, that's the, that, that's the thing is when we divide uh, scripture up into little boxes. We miss out of the big picture. Paul says, if you would just sit and let and be in him and let him be in you, let the gospel of Christ be in you, become that new creation, put off those old things. Then when you, when you come to that place, you'll be able to rise up and walk for God's glory. You'll be able to rise up and walk in love. 
it's interesting that sometimes I used to do counseling full time and I could tell over and over again that the way the people ask questions, that the problem was they weren't reading their Bible. They wanted me to give them a quick fix answer to situations where the Bible was clearly would communicate to them what they should do. But they don't have time, you know, they're working one job or two jobs or they're, you know, the family is all working and, and trying to to build up their empire or whatever it is that they may be. And because they don't take time to sit with the Lord. You will find out very clearly you're not able to walk in the Lord either. Now, I don't know how that hits you, but that's something we need to turn the clock back a little bit and say, okay, Lord, what is it that you want the church to hear? What he wants the church to hear is to people to get back to fasting and praying, get back to giving time to the Lord, to sit with the Lord so that as you sit with the Lord, he will then empower you. People ask me, oh God, and they sing songs. Oh, give us more power, more power, more power. Give, 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 give. No, no, no. It doesn't come until we sit, 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 sit. <laughs> Did you hear me? And I didn't say it. Ephesians says this. Paul writes to the church. Come on, church, sit with me. Sit with me. And when you sit with me, you'll be able to walk with me. I believe Colwyn and I have been able to do all we've done around the world is because we spent a lot of time sitting with the Lord. Trying to hear his voice, spending time in prayer. And then as we do that, then we're able to walk out. Walk out his calling, walk out his direction, walk out what he wants us to do. Sitting in the walking because he's going to tell us, Paul is going to tell, until you sit and walk with the Lord, you will not be able to stand against the enemy's tactics. When people tell me that they're just getting blown out of the water all the time and they're just getting knocked down all the time and they're just going through all kinds of problems, maybe the question needs to be asked, have you sat with the Lord? Have you walked with the Lord? Because if you do those two things first, you'll be able to stand in the Lord. But no matter whatever comes your way, whatever it is you may be facing, and you'll be able to stand and you'll say, well, Pastor Jim, you don't know what I'm going through. I maybe don't. But I have learned through my life, my own personal life, with all the difficulties and challenges, you don't know me either. You don't know what I've had to go through to be where I am, where I am today. I've had to sit and learn to sit with the Lord. I've had to learn how to walk with the Lord so that I could take a stand in the Lord. Too many Christians are taking a stand on all kinds of other things, but not in the Lord Jesus Christ. Take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. Take a stand for what Christ and his word teaches us. Stand on that. And that's what Paul is going to do when he gets to chapter 6, verse 10. He's going to tell us, now that you know all of this, Listen to what he says. Finally, my brethren, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What? Finally? Finally, what are you saying, Paul? Finally, if you sit with the Lord and walk with the Lord, you're going to be able to then have the power of the Lord and the might of his strength to do what? To go to battle. To go to battle. There is a spiritual warfare that we're in the midst of, and we need to realize that that's where we got to fight. Oh, my, and I've said it so many times this week, and it's like a broken record, and, and, you, and I'm going to say it again today. You know, we're spending too much time fighting each other as believers in Christ over the most stupidest little things. Who we are and what we are is found in Christ Jesus. And there only, in his word, 
And so we're going to be in a battle. He says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in Jesus Christ. Are we getting it yet? And in the power of his might. This word power is that explosive word. Dunamis, to explode, to be able to be explosive, not in the things of this world and explosive in anger and all those other things, worldly things, but to be explosive in the power and might of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be interesting if people would walk around in our towns and our cities and be explosive for Jesus Christ? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing what the Spirit of God is saying? Through Paul? Then he goes on. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Put on the full armor of God so that whatever the enemy throws at you, you are able to stand. Stand in who? Stand in Jesus Christ. Stand in the gospel. Stand in the truth of the word. That's where we're to stand. And he goes on that you may be able to stand against the vials of the devil. What's going on in the church? What's going on in, in disciples' life? What's going on in the Christian community often is got to do where the devil is attacking the devil. Because what does the devil do? He comes to divide. He comes to destroy. He comes to tear down. He comes to do whatever he needs to do to, to take the wind, to take the breath of God out of you. Are we hearing it? Oh, I could say a lot more right now, but I'm trying to hold back a little bit. Because somehow we've got off the pathway and we've got on to another path. A pathway that leads to destruction. It may seem at the point that it's only off a little bit, but a little bit down the road can be a, quite a bit away from the real truth, away from the real kingdom of God. The real kingdom of God is that we need to sit with Jesus Christ and hear his spirit so that we can then have the power and the anointing to walk out his will for our lives. So that as we walk out his will for our life, we're able to stand against the devil himself. People, I don't know how else, you know, we've made the scriptures too complicated. They're not complicated. They're just telling us what to do. And if we do them, we will have the strength and the power of God to push back the, the gates of hell. So he tells us, okay, how are we going to stand now? How are we going to be able to do this? For then he goes on, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Isn't it interesting? He says, we wrestle not against these fleshly things. That's not where we're to take a stand on. That's not where we're to, to battle. Wouldn't it be interesting if people and I was looking at Facebook again and seeing all the things that people are taking the stand on, if they would just take that same energy, that same anointing or non-anointing, and use it to take a stand for the truth of Jesus Christ. To use scriptures and scripture references and, and to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. That if we sit with him and walk with him, we will be able to stand against all what the world is trying to impose upon the church. The world is going to try to destroy the church. The world is going to try to put you in bondage. The world is going to do these things. That's the nature of the world. But the difference between the world and us, we are not walking in the world. We're walking in Jesus Christ. And those things cannot bind us 
because we are walking in the gospel that sets us free. We're walking under the blood of Jesus Christ that sets us free. We have been redeemed by Christ who has set us free. We, we, we've somehow got looking at something else. Oh, it's easy to sit in the coffee shops and everything else and, and tear people down and, and, and eat people up and spit them out. That's not of God. That is not of God. What is of God is that we sit with him, that we walk our walk in him, and that we stand our stand in him. You hear? He goes on. And so as he talks about and he and he says to us, this is what the real battle is. This is what the real battle is. You know, people are focusing on elections and they're focusing on COVID-19 and they're focusing on all kinds. Kind. Yes, that's the physical challenges that we're going in into. But Paul says there's a greater battle and it's a spiritual battle. And we need to understand that's where we need to stand. Paul is saying, because he's now going to sum up by saying, therefore, just as he said, finally, he says, finally, understand where you're supposed to be standing. And then he says, therefore, because of that stand that you need to stand, he then says, okay, to be able to stand, you need to put on the full armor of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? We need to put on the full armor of God. Why? So that we will have the power and might to be able to stand against the enemy in these last days. We're, you know, people, the church has forgotten we've got a spiritual enemy. It's not each other. It's Satan himself. The prince of this world has come to try to rule even the church. But Paul says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil days and having done all to stand. So he's saying, take up the full armor of God. So why? So we can withstand the evil days so that we can stand strong in the gospel of Christ in those evil days. Are we getting it? Are we hearing it? I'm talking to myself too. You know, and that's why I've not been willing to get involved with all this other stuff because I want to get involved in the fullness of Jesus Christ. I want to sit with him and walk with him and stand with him. That's what I want more than anything else. That you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done to stand. Look at that. He's already used the word stand several times. Verse 14, and he goes on, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. You know, it's going to, I could take over probably three or four hours to talk about the four, full armor of God, but we don't have time for that today. But the idea is to gird your waist with truth. Why? Why does that need to be done down there? Why do you need to have the belt, and not only the belt, but the skirt around your reproductive area? So that in the spiritual realm, that when you're reproducing it, you're reproducing truth. That's what Paul is trying to get to them. And putting on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, that when you stand against the enemy, the enemy doesn't see you. He sees the righteousness of Christ Jesus, the uprightness of Christ Jesus. That when the enemy comes, he looks at you and says, here is a person who has sat with Christ. Here is a person who has walked with Christ. And now here is a person who is going to defend and stand for Jesus Christ. Are we getting it yet? And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on some sandals. Put on some shoes that wherever you're going, wherever you're going, the coffee shops, the telephones, the, the Zoom meetings, whatever, wherever you're going, wherever the soles of your feet are touching, you are presenting the gospel of Christ Jesus. Are we seeing it? Is that what we're doing? Is that what the church is doing, is going out as disciples of Christ? And wherever we walk, we're speaking truth. Wherever we walk, 
We have on the breastplate of righteousness. Wherever we go, we're bringing forth the good news of Jesus Christ. He goes on and he says, you know, not only that, but stand therefore and gird your ways with truth. And he goes on to verse 15 and shod, shod your feet with a preparation of the gospel that will bring peace. If there's anything that the enemy wants, doesn't want us to do is bring peace. Do you know that in the last days, Satan himself, the beast, is going to try to bring a false peace to mankind. That's what he's trying to do right now. But the peace that we're supposed to have comes from the gospel. Then he says, Paul says, above all, taking up the shield of faith. You can't stand until you take up the shield of faith. Because the faith is what is going to cause you to be able to stand in Jesus Christ. I believe in his word. No matter what deadly thing comes against me, no matter what the enemy may try to do, whether I become martyred or not, I have won because I have taken a stand in faith in Jesus Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Amen? And to have the, the, the shield of faith... So we can withstand, isn't it interesting that we're able to withstand the, or be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one? See, when you're taking a stand, you got to take a stand not against whether this is right or that is right. We're taking a stand as whether what people are saying is that are they speaking the truth of the word of God? That's where we need to stand in. That's where we need to hold up our uh, shield. So when the enemy is throwing all these fiery darts, and he does, oh, I've had so many, many times when people have thrown fiery darts at me, and they usually use it by words or by writing. But if I'm walking in faith and believing what I'm doing that is of, of God, and I'm uh, walking it out in faith because my feet are prepared with the gospel of peace, my heart is covered in the righteousness of Christ. You know, my, my reproductive area is reproducing truth. But then he goes on to take on the helmet of salvation. Why do we need to put on the full armor of God? Because our brains need to be saved every day. Our thinking needs to be saved. That's where Satan attacks. That's where Satan tries to get us to, to get involved in all these worldly arguments and things like that. He's trying to take our mind and move us off over into there instead of keeping our mind on Jesus Christ. Do you know what I'm saying? Put on the helmet to, prepare, to protect your thoughts so that you can be saved from the thoughts of the wicked one. And then finally pick up the sword of the spirit. And here it is. Isn't it interesting that the word spirit is also known as breath? Or as often, sometimes the spirit is also one of his other names as fire. You know, to be able to stand up against the enemy with the full armor of God on, with the shield of faith, and then be able to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He clarifies that today, what is the, the power of the sword? What is the power of the spirit? It's the word of God. That's why if Satan can keep you out of it, he's already got you beaten before you even started. It's the word of God that we need to be in. That the spirit, which is the word of God, then he goes on. Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit. So he tells us that, first of all, that the Word of God is the breath of God that's going to empower us to be able to stand against the things of this world, but that also that if we're going to continue to stand, that we need to be in prayer and supplication, means seeking God in prayer and supplication in the Spirit, not just, you know, coming to the Lord every day and, and saying, Lord, here is all my requests, answer them. And we're asking like a child to the Father and saying, you know, give me this, give me that, give me, give me, give me, give me. But the purpose of coming to the Lord also is not 
only letting your court request be, be made known, but it's also so that you will have the power of the Spirit upon your life that you're going to be able to stand. So he says when you go and you pray and have supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to the end, being watchful to the end. People are saying, are we in the last days? I think we're pretty close to it. But we need to be watchful to the end. We need to have on the full armor of God to the end. We need to be taking a stand to the end. The plan, the will of God has not changed. It's the same as it was for the church of Ephesus, and it's the same for the church today. To be watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So not only to be watchful to the end for that which is going on in our lives, but also to be watchful to the end for our brothers and sisters who may be struggling, who may, may need the gospel of peace. They may need to get back and sitting before the Lord. That we may need to exhort them. Come on now, sit before the Lord. Come on now, walk in the Lord. Come on now, take a stand for the Lord. That's what it's all about in these last days. That's what we need to continue to do until the end. Not all this other garbage. You say, well, you're kind of bent out of shape today. No, I, you know, I'm trying to come across to you that it's the word of God. It's as we sit with the Lord, as we walk with the Lord, we will be able to stand with the Lord. And that the things of this world that the enemy throws against us will not knock us down, but we will be able to stand strong because of his might and his power working in us. To me, this is exciting. It's so simple. People say, well, give me the 10 principles. Give me this. Give me that. Show me, show me the ways that I can be set free. I will show you the, the way to set free. You want to know? Are we listening? Sit with the Lord. Walk with the Lord. And stand with the Lord. And that all comes through the word of the Lord. He goes on. He says in 19, and for me that the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Here we're back to that word mystery again. The mystery is this. You can now have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ through the blood of Christ. And you can sit with him. You can go into the Holy of Holies. The mystery is, is now that you can walk day by day through the blood of Christ and the resurrection of power of Jesus Christ. The mystery that Paul was trying to reveal that as you see these two things, you're now going to be able to take authority over the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of Satan, and be able to stand. Not in who you are but in who Christ Jesus is. Amen. In the power of the gospel, which Paul says, for I, for which I am an ambassador in change, that it may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Here's an interesting thought. Paul tells them all this stuff, both sitting, walking, and standing. And then he concludes. He says, this is what I'm chained to. This is what has bound me up. And I want to tell you today, this is what has bound me up as a believer in Christ for 50 years. That I've been bound to sitting with Jesus. I have been bound to walking in Jesus. I have been bound to taking a stand for Jesus by putting on the full armor of God. And because of that, he has empowered me he has strengthened me. He has set me free. And that he has become my joy and my peace. And like Paul says, I'm an ambassador in chains for Christ. I'm going to get myself a t-shirt one day and say, I'm an ambassador in chains for Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador in chains for Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador in chains for Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord.
that you want to give us the boldness, the power, the anointing. You want us to take a stand for you, Lord, but on the basis of the gospel, on the basis of fellowship with you, on the basis of walking with you. Oh, God, I thank you for what Paul was speaking to the Ephesian church and how he, the same words that were spoken to the Ephesian church is need to be spoken to the church worldwide today. Oh, Lord, that if we could just sit with you every day, if we could just walk in you, have our mind, you know, covered with the helmet of salvation and walk in you so that, Lord, when the enemy tries to come and attack us, that we can stand in you and have your anointing and your power. Oh, Father, I just pray for everyone that listens today. I pray that there's a stirring up inside, like you have stirred me up inside today. Lord, this is not a game. This is reality. This is the truth that Paul was trying to say and teach the people. It is the truth that the Holy Spirit is trying to breathe upon his church today. So, Father, I pray for your helping hand to be with us and you would guide and direct us not only today, but throughout this week now. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. Well, I hope that has really kind of shook things up inside. It has for me and it's causing me to rethink a lot of some of the things that I've been doing too. That there's no greater thing that we need to do each day than just sit with the Lord. And then as we go out, there's nothing greater that we need to do is other than to walk in the Lord wherever we go, that the fruit of spirit may flow through so that we can come to the place that at the end of the day, we can say, I have taken a stand for Jesus Christ, for he is my King. He is my Lord, amen. We love you. Keep on keeping on. And if you want to respond by messaging me or saying something, that feel free. But I share what I share each day out of a love to see the disciples of Christ grow. Not in the things of this world, but to grow in the things of Jesus Christ. Amen. We love you. Keep on keeping on. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye for now.